What's up, YouTube? Welcome to today's video where we learn how our god Quinn ended up dying on his unkillable character. When I first saw this death, I was like, wow, he actually died to that? And it actually makes a lot of sense. And this is a very, very common problem that a lot of hardcore players run into. And that is the question of what happens when you have an Achilles heel. And he does have an Achilles heel here. So if we want to see how tanky the character is, maybe we can just see. First off, this is his character. Whoa, what is going on? He is going crazy. But this is him testing his character out after he died on Standard League. And you can see this character is a giga tank. It can take everything. It can take fizz hits. It can take elemental hits. It can take it all. Nothing can kill this character. It is immortal, or so we think. So at this point, it's pretty much lamenting the fact, how did this character die? Impressive. But can you tank a strong box? And that Thanks. you hear is how he does. <laughs> Why can I tank over Exarch, bro? So he can pretty much tank it all. And he's wondering why can he tank Uber Siri Exarch and not tank a strong box mob? So what actually happened was he was doing a difficulty level 8 lake and he opened a strong box, which led to his demise. And it's not really even that crazy what happened to him, right? He opened the strong box. We open strong boxes all the time. And he tested out his character and everything seemed it would be fine. And the character was pretty much unkillable except it had one fatal flaw that he was actually trying to address. So if you look at the title of his stream, it was all I want for my birthday is Emperor's Vigilance. So Quinn's a smart person. He knows what the fatal flaw of his build is. And we will find out soon enough what it is. But... Let's just see his character stats, and boy oh boy, are the character stats pretty nice. You give me this character, I can give you the world. Or maybe not, but... And this is actually an old character stat sheet, because I actually forgot to convert it to 3.19. But let's just look at it over here. 5.1k life, 2 million effective HP on fire damage, cold damage, and lightning damage, and 100,000 max hit. That's just some pretty crazy numbers, and... 320,000 armor. How is that even possible? 23% block, 1% blo spell block. So, character seems absolutely immortal. Now, this is definitely your case of a well rounded beast. He's addressing maximum resistances at 90%. He has 320k armor. He has a bunch of regen because of Divine Shield. So, what this does is 3% of physical damage prevented from hits recently is regenerated as. Energy shield per second. He also has his juggernaut node over here, which is untiring. 1.5% of physical damage prevented from hits is regenerated as life per second. So he has life regen and he also has energy shield regen. So what can this character not do? So the reason why this character is actually so tanky is because he has the juggernaut notable that grants him mini transcendence without the downsides. So what transcendence actually does is it converts your physical damage to elemental damage reduction. So say you have 90% max res, and then you also have 90% physical damage reduction, you essentially almost have 99% max res. So your character is pretty much immortal. That's why you see the Uber Siri XR clip, and he's able to take all the balls, he's able to take all the fire damage, cold damage, lightning damage. He can take it all. So... He is using a shield crush for Replica Dream Fetter where you have that much damage and Replica Dream Fetter actually scales your armor for attack damage. So he has a bunch of armor right here and you can see here is 837%. It's kind of funny. We think that this is a lot when compared to an armor stacker in softcore trade is really not that much. Now his endurance charges are being converted over to brutal charges for some remnants of passable DPS. We all know he doesn't want to be Quinn with zero DPS at all. So he does have Brutal Charges. And what Brutal Charges does is it converts your Endurance Charges to something that actually is able to do triple damage. So I think it's 3% per Brutal Charge. And lastly, he's using Doriani Jewel. So he has the 1446 Energy Shield. So he has 1446 Energy Shield right here. Without this Jewel, he has 467. But let's go watch the death and what exactly happened to his poor character. So right now, he's just pretty much hammering away. He opened the strong box, telling the mobs to calm down. <laughs> he is actually shocked. He, I actually think he doesn't know what just happened. He's like processing 
he can't really process what happened. He doesn't really know. He's looking around back after my what actually happened, right? So I'm down, man. if you watch it slowly, it's pretty apparent. So there's all these spikes. He's literally standing in all the spikes. And what these spikes do is that they shotgun him and make him take maximum amounts of damage. Now, why does this shotgun do so much damage? It's because he looks at it. It's steel-infused bone husk. Now, bone husks are actually a natural inhabitant of ossuary. And I actually have to admit, I did die to the gauntlet once during that because it actually does shotgun and it does a lot of damage. And they're pretty scary. So what does Steel Infuse actually do? So Steel Infuse actually grants overwhelmed 10% physical damage reduction and it also has 40% increased physical damage. So this is very, very important because physical damage reduction overwhelm makes it so that instead of having 90% physical damage reduction right here, it goes to 80%. So in the config, you can actually set the enemy skill physical overwhelm and you can see at 10, it makes it go down to 80% regardless of how much armor you have. There's no way to prevent it to make it lower than whatever the physical damage reduction actually is. So it's pretty much like the pen node for physical spells or physical hits. Now, the stat cannot go negative, so you can't actually go all the way below negative. And that's pretty much the reason why physical is worse than elemental damage because you can't actually overwhelm something to negative levels. And I do think if they want to balance the game a little bit more, have more build diversity, maybe overwhelm going negative could be good. But in this case, basically, his 90% physical damage reduction of his 320k armor is not really working at 90%. It's actually working at 80%. And the fatal flaw here is that his character actually has 0% evasion. Now, every single one of these spikes that this thing shoots out, the bone husk on the ground, can all be evaded. Now, his character is also in the worst position possible, getting shotgun by four different bone spikes on the ground. And this is really the case of the danger of having no evasion on your build. And this is why I think iron reflexes and unwavering stance are generally a bait idea unless you have a decent amount of block, like 50% or so. So his character actually does have some block. It's unfortunate that it was only 23%. If it was 30%, Maybe he could have survived. If he got the Emperor's Vigilance Shield that he was trying to get, he would have definitely survived. If he didn't have Iron Reflexes, he would also have survived. So if you want to see how bad Iron Reflexes is for a bunch of hits, you can see right here his effective HP pool is 252,000. Now if you actually unspec Iron Reflexes, it goes all the way up to 377,000. Now I actually don't know if his Molten Shell was up. I don't actually think... Oh, Damn. wow. His Molten Shell actually somehow got procced. So I don't really know what actually hit him. So his Molten Shell got procced by something beforehand. So you can see his Molten Shell is not even up. If his Molten Shell is up, he also would have definitely survived. So there's a lot of different things that go into this. So if you see here, you take off Molten Shell, the character's stunningly looking a lot squishier. And then you don't have Iron Reflexes the character is a lot, lot worse. So overall, you can see here, Iron Reflexes actually lowers the effective HP pool by so much that it goes all the way down to 105k. And at that point, without Molten Show Up, his character is pretty much a sitting duck for all of those projectiles. Now, if he had any like 40 or 50% evasion, then he probably would have lived. And he did stand in the middle to get perfectly shotgunned. But that's just a pretty unfortunate thing because he kind of needs Iron Reflexes for his damage. If he doesn't have Iron Reflexes, his DPS goes down by roughly 20%. And then you can see his Fire, Max, and Cold Hit actually goes down by a lot also. So Molten Shell is really broken in today's world. When you don't have it up, it actually destroys your character. But that's how a lot of hardcore characters die. You have this little gap where you don't have Molten Shell up and it actually just kills you. Now, as I said, evasion is underrated, but running Jade Flash is generally enough. So that's why on my character currently, I'm playing Bone Shatter. You can see here, I have 25% evasion, but when I have the Flask up, I have 44%. And 44% feels a lot better than 0%. That means for every single map where you're getting hit by a lot of stuff, without any evasion, you're pretty much taking 44% more damage. It's the same reason why Spell Suppression is also sometimes good. For Harbinger, when you don't have 100%, because you're pretty much taking however much less damage you are from whatever you're suppressing. So if you have 80% spell suppress, 
then you're pretty much going to be taking 80% less damage if you're getting hit by a lot of spells at once. So it's still a huge, huge deal, even if you don't cap out your spell suppression or evasion, because it just provides a lot of damage reduction for a lot of big hits. Now, I do think Unwavering Stance is extremely dangerous to take, and most people should only be taking this node pretty much you can, if you're fighting a boss where it's mostly spells or it's not doing a lot of small attacks. And Unwavering Stance, I think, is very, very dangerous while mapping. And it's pretty much why the reason why block and evasion is so important in the Gauntlet of Multi Projectile mod, pretty much the reason why Saboteur and Necromancer are so good. Saboteur gets a lot of evasion and also has the blind node. And then Necromancer gets a lot of block and spell block. And this is the shield that Quinn would have gotten called Emperor's Vigilance. It would have given him glancing blows, which would actually probably saved his life. We oversee over here, we actually plug in Emperor's Vigilance. I'm pretty sure that this item would have added a lot of EHP, right? Or maybe it wouldn't have, who knows? So let's go see here, Emperor's Vigilance. And I don't really know why it doesn't give him any EHP, but it should have saved him because he would have 52% block, which would have actually helped out a lot in terms of keeping him alive. So let's see here, Emperor's Vigilance and... Okay, so with his this shield here, 503k, and this one here, 377k. But I do think that this shield would have saved him purely because it would have given it enough block and the glancing blows damage reduction would have been enough. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this has given you some insight on how to keep your character alive and why evasion is incredibly underrated and why Iron Reflexes is honestly a bait node unless you are playing uh, armor stacker and then you pretty much need it in order to get your damage but thanks for watching everyone i hope you find more mirrors exalted orbs and divines than me and see you next time bye <laughs>